This is a 3.2a video. We're going to talk about least squares regression. And we are going to use some information from the Premier League to figure out how to interpret the slope and y-intercept of a least squares regression line and how to determine uh, the equation for a least squares regression line. So a regression line is a line that describes how a response variable changes as an explanatory variable changes. So um, Remember, response is the y variable, explanatory is the x variable. And this is what the general equation will look like for the uh, line of regression, or a least squares regression line, where y hat is predicted values. A, in this case, is the uh, y-intercept, and B, the coefficient of x, is going to be the slope. So one thing, that, one thing to consider, though, is in your calculator, you will see another equation that looks similar to this, but it will be flipped. It's going to say y hat equals uh, b, or it's going to say y hat equals ax plus b. And in this case, your slope is now a and your y-intercept is b. The key is you need to know that the slope is always the, very, is always the constant that is the coefficient of x. So you can, ch you can choose whichever equation you want from your calculator, and I'll show you that in a minute. But this is the way that the formula chart expresses the equation for AP. So let's look at this first example. I'm going to show you how to calculate the line of regression. So over here, I'll summarize this data, this info here. Over here, I have the Premier League standings from the 2019-2020 season, where we have each team listed in order of how they finished, uh, the number of goals they scored or goals for, the number of goals that they gave up, and the total number of points that they ended the season with. So they get three points for winning a game, they get one point for a draw, and they get zero points for losing a game. So at the end of the season, the team with the most points, which this year was Liverpool, wins the season. So what I want to know is, can we predict the number of points a team will have based on the number of goals they score? I mean, I have a scatter plot here showing uh, the explanatory variable goals for, or the number of goals they scored, with points as the predicted or response variable. And so with our least squares regression line, we're going to figure out the line that models this data, and it's called the least squares regression line. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type into my calculator list one, my explanatory variable, so goals four, and in list two, my uh, response variable, which is points. So in the calculator, go to your list, stat, edit, and start typing in list one and list two. Okay, so again, just remember to make sure that if, if you remember the table, Liverpool had 85 goals and 99 points. You need to make sure that each team's goals and points are matched up in the calculator. So to find the, the line of regression, we're going to go stat, calculate. And you can see here, here is, like I said, line reg a x plus b so here a is the slope b is the y-intercept but if you scroll down further you can see the one that we said earlier line reg a is the y-intercept b is the slope so you can pick whatever one you want i'll do the second one for now and so it's going to give me a my intercept and b my slope remember to turn your diagnostic on if you want to see the correlation should be given to you here as well if you want so let's copy this over to the notes. So the first question was calculate the equation for the least squares regression line relating points to goals for. So these are my two variables. You always relate y to x. Now I want you to take a note about how I wrote these variables out. I actually wrote points with a hat on top because this is representing the predicted amount of points from this equation here in our x variable was goals for. So interpret the slope and the y-intercept from the regression line. So the slope is always going to be 
for every additional increment of x. So every additional goal, we expect the y value, which is points, to increase, because it's positive, by 0.836, because that's the slope. Interpreting the y-intercept, the y-intercept is when the x value is zero. If we plug zero in here, we'd be left with 9.182. So the y-intercept is the number of points we would expect a team to, to get if they scored zero goals. So when we're interpreting the slope, it's important to remember that we are using a linear model. We're using um, not the actual data. So we are finding predicted points. So we need to make sure that the predicted points increase by. And when we are talking about the y-intercept, we are also, again, making sure we're saying we predict that they will finish the season with nine points. And yes, it's possible to finish with nine points because you could score zero goals and still have um, nine ties and get nine points. Not, there are gonna be plenty of instances where it doesn't make sense to interpret the y-intercept, but this, this scenario does make sense. So we do wanna make sure we interpret it. Now let's use the regression line to predict the number of points for a team that scored 45 goals. So all we're going to do is we're going to plug in 45 for our x variable, number of goals scored, and get our predicted points. So using this linear model, we would expect if a team scored 45 goals that they would finish the season with 46.802 points. Let's look at the third standard. Use the least squares regression line to predict y for a given x. That's what we just did in the previous problem. We predicted y for a given x. And explain the dangers of extrapolation. So let's look. Extrapolation is when we make predictions that are outside of the values of x that we have. For instance, if you look at our graph here, the smallest x value we have looks to be about 26 somewhere, almost 26. And our largest X value appears to be 102. So extrapolation would be when we were making predictions way outside of the range. If we were asked to predict uh, how many points would a team score if, or how many, yeah, how many points would a team score if they scored 150 goals in a season? Well, that information is well outside the range of what we have. So, we don't know what this graph will look like when it keeps going further to the right. It could taper off or it could grow exponentially or it, it could have some different relationship that is not linear. So whenever we're making estimates outside, either way below or way above, it's called extrapolation. And we cannot trust anything that we've predicted when we're extrapolating. For the third and fourth standard, calculate interpret a residual and explain the concept of least squares. So a residual is the difference between an observed value and the predicted value. So a residual is observed or y minus the predicted y hat. So for instance, if we look at this point right here, this point is a coordinate. It has an x and a y value, x and y. The points on the line are all going to be an X and a Y hat value because this line will only give us predicted values. The raw actual data, for instance, this is Liverpool who scored 85 goals and had 99 points. So their observed value would be 99 points. Their predicted value, well, we'd have to figure it out by plugging in 85. How many points will we expect a team to score? Or yeah, how many points will we expect them to score if they scored 85 goals? It's gonna be wherever this line is. So it looks like it'll be about 70, 80 points. So you can see Liverpool did better than expected because they have a positive residual. All of these red lines that you see, 
all of these red lines are the residuals for these points. So you can see there are some point, there are some teams that performed exactly as expected because they're on the line. But this is an example of a positive residual. And this is an example of a negative residual. It's negative because their actual number of points was lower than predicted based on the number of goals that they scored. So let's pick a point and calculate the residual. So Sheffield United scored 39 goals and they received 54 points. To calculate the residual, I'm gonna have to plug in X and figure out their predicted number of points and compare it with how many they actually scored. So you can see Sheffield United is right here in the table. They had 39 goals and 54 points. So here's the first step. We plugged in X, the observation, and found that a team that scored 39 points, we'd ex or 39 goals, we'd expect to score 42.84 points in the season. The residual, we compare it with how many they actually scored. So you can see they had a positive residual of 11.16, which means they scored, they ended up having 11 more points than expected based on the number of goals that they scored. So in this case, a positive residual is a good thing because you ended up having more points than expected for the team. I've also put GF just as a reminder, this is goals for it's the number of goals they scored. So let's calculate and interpret the residual for Arsenal, who scored 56 goals and received 56 points. So we'll do the same process and then interpret what their residual means. So as you can see, we plugged in their X value, 56, and got an expected number of 56 points, which means their residual is zero because they scored 56 points. So they actually performed as expected. They received the exact, or they, they received the predicted amount of points based on the number of goals that they scored. So if you look at the graph, that means Arsenal is one of these points on the line, 56 and 56. So they are this point right here, which is on the predicted line. So the last concept I wanna talk about is this idea of least squares regression. Why is it called least squares? And it's really simple. It's called the least squares regression line because it wants to minimize the sum of the squared residuals. And the least squares regression line of y on x is a line that makes the sums of the squared residuals as small as possible. So to, to put that in simple terms, there could be many different models for this line, but the least squares regression line is the line that makes these red distances as small as possible. Now we call them uh, the squared residuals because if we were to take the average residual, then it would always be zero. The, the negative residuals will cancel out with the positives. So that's why we square the residuals and then sum them or add them together. So it's least squares because it's the smallest sum of the squared residuals. And finally, just a couple other names you might see for a linear model or a least squares regression line. Least squared regression line, LSRL, least squared regression line, a linear model or an, a regression equation. All of these are referring to the line that summarizes a scatter plot. Go ahead and scroll to the last page and give these independent practice problems a uh, shot on your own.